Hi, I'm Mary Drummond, and I host the Voices of CX podcast, where I talk to CX practitioners, thought leaders, and academics from various industries. Sometimes guests give us topics that deserve a bit more explanation. In CX in Context, we put those ideas in a practical business context, so you can see why they matter and how to make them work for you. This is CX in Context. This week on Voices of CX podcast, I had the pleasure of interviewing Jonathan Schroyer. Jonathan is the Chief Experience Innovation Officer at Arise, and he and I had an amazing conversation about the decentralization of work and its impact on customer experience. Due to the times we live in, we typically associate remote work and hybrid work to COVID. But the truth is this movement started way before, but we do have COVID to thank for the acceleration of this process. And while COVID accelerated this move into remote hybrid, what it also did was forced a lot of companies that had previously categorically rejected the idea of remote or hybrid into having to confront the harsh reality as it was. And when push came to shove, they realized that they really could create systems and processes to manage workers working from wherever they were. A recent article in the Harvard Business Review discusses that while office are now being confronted with the desire of employees to have hybrid work loads where they work from the office and at home on separate days, this is forcing them to rethink whether they're going to keep their office spaces open. Because when employees do come into work, they need a place where they're able to congregate and work and get a little bit of that cultural feel of working in the same office. Now, floating around the idea of working three days from the office, two days at home is really interesting. And during this moment where employees are reconsidering their values when it comes to commute, workload, work from anywhere, working fully remote, it is truly important for companies to listen to what their employees desire, especially if they want to keep on talent. But the most important thing to never lose focus of is that when it comes down to it, the most important element to consider is the customer and how this is affecting their experience. I would encourage you to not feel pressured to switch to this type of model if it doesn't fit around your company culture. And while a lot of people are talking about it, there's a lot of pressure, not only from the media, but from employees themselves to kind of force companies into hybrid models, whether it's a shorter week, whether it's working part-time at home, part-time from within the office, or going fully remote. You're the one that knows best about what your customer needs and expects. So remembering to keep them at the heart of your culture and your organization is the most crucial aspect. Let's take it back to my interview with Jonathan Schroyer and listen to my favorite outtake of our interview earlier on. Yeah, it's interesting because all of this happened pre-COVID. And then when COVID happened, it was just a crazy acceleration. You know, I was discussing this earlier on today about this concept of decentralization of work and how important this conversation is for so many different reasons. One, uh, the, the tech hubs as we know them, they're not working. It, 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 it's not sustainable. And, and, you know, this exodus from San Francisco, from New York, even from Austin, Texas, where people just can't afford it anymore. It's, it's no longer pleasurable. It's no longer good. Even though tech has some of the, the highest salaries in the world, it still becomes uh, like completely unsustainable to live in these locations. And, and you know, tech is almost like um, uh, locusts. They just like move into this area, deplete it. Ooh, hold on. I'm going to ruin things here. They deplete it of all its resources and then move on, you know, and a lot of this happens because they'll move into a new location. They'll pay these enormous salaries. They'll bring people in. So the city has to construct houses. Traffic goes to hell. People that come into town have higher acquisition power, and then they drive the price of real estate up force all of the locals out of those uh, those properties, wreak havoc on, on structure that was previously in place. And then once they've had their fill, they move on. And and I mean, this has become an epidemic and, and you're still in the Bay Area. I lived there for a while. We know what that's like. We know that that 
is something that's truly not ideal. These cities end up losing their identities. They lose their character. They lose their personality. Um, they lose their charm. Um, and, and when you decentralize it, not only do you solve that problem, you also give opportunity to many, so many more people. And the company is pulling from such a greater pool of individuals. So it feels so much like a win-win. Is Was this kind of where your mind was going? Am I tripping like totally on the wrong page or is, is that kind of the argument? Pro-economics of the world. And you, you look at the availability to capital. Um, you see that it's fairly centralized. And I think that you know, there's a reason why cryptocurrency is becoming so interesting to people now is because it's the ability to decentralize wealth. Mm -hmm. And, and, when, and if, you, if you think about the, the biggest transformations that I think that are happening kind of globally in the business world, I think one is a, a general decentralization uh, regarding, doesn't really matter whether you're talking about payments, whether you're talking about work, whether you're talking about business, information, whatever it is. There's this, this, this decentralization. And in some ways, I think people tie decentralization to fairness and equitability, mm -hmm. um, which in some cases is probably true, right? And, and so anytime that you centralize wealth into a certain area, you know, whether it's tech or whether it's something else coming in, you know, that area is going to, the DNA is going to change, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think what COVID has, has done, which has been super interesting, is that it has expedited some mm -hmm. of the things that we were predicting were going to happen in five years. Like when we started fishing, we were like, in five years, you know, 30% 30, 30 of the people are going to leave tech hubs, right? Well, it ended up being, you know, in one year, right? In, or in two years, right? So it expedited this capability for people to change their mindset. Carol Dweck does this great book, Growth Mindset, right? Sometimes people get stuck in a fixed mindset accidentally. So COVID actually forced people to think like, wait a second, what are my priorities in life? What are my values? What are my ethos? How do I value work time versus family time versus me time, right? And then, and then where? Where is that value? You know, where can I get the most for that value at? And so I was, you know, very not happy, obviously, about COVID, but very happy to see some of these open minds about starting to think about, like, hey, wait, there's another way to work. Let's change the way people work. And by changing the way people work, you give them to, uh, the opportunity to do. I have an old boss, a lovely, great guy, Microsoft and uh, Amazon, Mark Honeycutt. He said, I work where I have to work and I live where I want to live. Now he gets to work where he wants to work and live where he wants to work in this new world, generally speaking, right? And I think that's a powerful statement for, for families and for personal health, for mental health, as well as economic health. You can hear my full interview with Jonathan Schroyer on the Voices of CX podcast, which you can find on your favorite streaming platform for podcasts. Thank you so much for joining me today on Voices of CX in Context, and I'll see you next time. Voices of CX is brought to you by Worthix, the only VOC platform that uses AI on the front end to augment your VOC. I'm Mary Drummond. CX in Context is hosted by me, co-produced and edited by Steve Barry and Ashley Alufahai. Be sure to check out the full episode linked in the description. See you on the next episode.